the fuse controlling the brake and turn signal lights on a vehicle pulling a trailer constantly fails. Technician A says low voltage at the flasher unit or the wrong flasher could be the cause. Technician B says the fuse is not the right amperage for this combination. Who is right? B only, technician A is wrong because an incorrect flasher will not typically blow fuses. Technician B is correct because high amperage will blow fuses. Electrical feedback is usually a result of what condition? Poor ground. Poor ground is correct because electricity must pass through ground and, if it cannot, it feeds back to source. High voltage in the circuit and excessive current in the circuit will not cause feedback. A defective halogen headlight bulb is being replaced. Why should you never touch the tip of a halogen bulb? Oil from your finger can cause shortened bulb life. Dot. Oil from your skin leaves a residue on the glass shell to the bulb. When the bulb is turned on, it begins to get hot. Much of this heat is dumped into the air around the bulb and is carried away. However, when there is oil on the bulb, it begins to get heated as well. The heat is actually enough to cause oil to boil and its temperature can reach near 1. 100 OF. This hot spot puts a great deal of heat near the glass bulb and can cause glass in the hot spot to warp and stretch. This causes a weak spot in the glass bulb which can break and thus shorten lifespan. The other choices will not happen. Technician A says an aiming screen will work on any headlight designed to aim the headlights. Technician B says mechanical aimers are used on hit high intensity discharged headlights. Who is right? only, Technician A is correct because the aiming screen is the tool of choice due to the many different headlight designs used. Technician B is wrong because mechanical aimers are no longer used and were never used on hit headlights.
Technician A says when checking a non-working component, one should check downstream from the component for an open circuit. Technician B says you should use an ammeter to check for an opening in a circuit. Who is right? Neither an or B technician A is wrong because you check upstream at the source for an open circuit. Technician B is wrong because you use an ohmmeter to check if an opening is suspected due to an inoperative component.